we be doing today. Um, we're doing a reaction between oxalic acid and sodium hydroxide. We know how much oxalic acid is in here quite accurately because the, um, the electronic balance did the guesswork for us. When you're doing this, you're going to have your acid in the flask and inside the burette, that long piece of glass wire that you guys saw, inside here is always going to be your base. We're going to add some phenolphthalein to... Wait, is it always like that? Yes, it's always going to be, the acid's always going to be down here, base is always going to be in the burette. The, we're going to add some phenolphthalein to the acid. Acid and phenolphthalein. What color is phenolphthalein in an acid? Clear. What we're trying to do today is neutralize an acid with a base. We want to add just enough base from that burette that we've neutralized it and done it. We don't want to do more base than necessary because then our products wouldn't be this. You'd have water, sodium oxalate, and excess sodium hydroxide, your excess reactant. We want just enough and stop. So what you're going to look for to know that your titration is done, you want to get the absolute lightest, lightest, lightest pink you possibly can to know that you stopped the reaction. Because as soon as you see that faint, 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 faint color pink, then you know I've neutralized it and it's just starting to tip over to the basic side. If you put in too much base, it's fuchsia, that's bad. The other important thing to note, the valve, when it's horizontal, it's closed. When it's vertical, ah, you can see there's still a little stuff left over. Open. Don't go to pour your base into the top when this is open, otherwise you'll just get a flood of base all over your table. These have a tendency to get clogged from time to time. So what you want to do before you start your titration process is just get an empty beaker sitting in your drawer, put it underneath, and open this guy up and make sure that it's flowing fine. So we need to read, don't do this like I almost just did, you need to read the volume of your base that's in here when you start so you know how much is going to go in there at the end. What I want you guys to look for is you, as we add the base, can you guys see that pink color in there? And then it goes away. And then pink, stop. Pink, stops. What's happening in there is there's phenolphthalein in there. You add some base and it goes, oh, I see a base, ah, oh, turn pink. But then there's way more acid in here than there is base. And so that acid comes along and neutralizes that base. It's not basic anymore. And so the pink goes away. See how the pink is kind of lingering a little bit longer? It takes longer for it to go away. It's hanging around a little bit longer. But okay, it's almost gone. Yeah, it's almost gone. And then it, when you start to see that it's taking a long time for the pink color to go away, that means you're getting closer to the end because you're getting closer to that tipping point where there's not enough acid anymore to neutralize your base. It's Literally, when you get to the end, when you get to the end, it has to be a drop by drop process. Maybe? Maybe? We got it. Let's have one more drop. Let's see. One drop. One drop. One drop. Watch it. 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 Now, can you see? One drop made it go from pink lemonade to this. That's what you're aiming for is that light, 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 light color. That's what you're looking for. Now, after you've done all this hard work of being patient and trying to get it to be light, light, light pink, what you're going to, um, don't forget, to read the final volume after you did all that work. Don't forget to write that number down.